So let's have a look at the basics of how a heat pump works. So what we have is a fan, which is electrically driven. The fan will draw energy from the air across the heat exchanger, which is known as the evaporator. With inside the evaporator, that is full of refrigerant. So what will happen as that energy is drawn across the evaporator, that refrigerant will boil. That boiled refrigerant then gets fed into uh, the compressor. So now the refrigeration gas is now fed into the compressor. The compressor will raise the temperature of that refrigerant considerably. The compressor speed is controlled by the silver box, which is the inverter. So the inverter will, will work out whether we need to use a kilowatt of electricity uh, or two kilowatts of electricity. That energy is then transferred into this uh, silver plate here, which is another heat exchanger, which we call the condenser. And that's where then the heat is then transferred from the refrigerant into your house to do heating and hot water. So the outdoor unit connects to the indoor unit via electrical connections here on the side. And then we have two pipes on the back, a primary flow pipe and a primary return pipe. So the outdoor unit is where the heat is generated. The indoor unit is where that heat is then distributed or managed. So let's have a look at some of the key components. So here we have a, a printed circuit board. Uh, so this is where our gray cable from our outdoor to our indoor unit connects. We then have a section here where our mains cable comes into. We have a circulation pump, which is there to take the heat from the outdoor unit into the indoor unit. And then down the back left hand side there, we have a uh, backup heater. So the heater is there for, let's say, the depths of winter where the outdoor unit needs support. Um, and that heater can work anywhere between zero kilowatts and nine to, yeah, to suit your, your demand. So with an air to water heat pump, your hot water has to be stored in a heat pump cylinder. These cylinders are generally available in capacities of between 150 litres and 300 litres. And then depending on the installation type, you may need a buffer tank. So a buffer tank can be there to support defrost and to prevent short cycling. 